In this video, I'm showing you the new Innovonix 645 SightStreamer 2 and how it can help you remotely monitor your signals. This video is sponsored by Innovonix and the SightStreamer 2 that I have right here is on loan from them. I'm Marcos O'Rourke and I've been a broadcast engineer for over 20 years in the Los Angeles market, maintaining several radio stations in various locations throughout Southern California and Southern Nevada. Imagine that your transmitter site is not easily accessible or that you're in a different market and you need to check in on the station. Well, you could always call someone in the area and ask them to put ears on the station, but that's not always an option. And sometimes you just have to hear the audio yourself to diagnose issues. Well, the new Innovonix 645 Site Streamer 2 is just the box that might save your bacon. The SightStreamer 2 is a web-enabled receiver for remote signal monitoring. It's a great confidence monitor for remote transmitter sites that allows you to monitor your stations from any web-enabled device, such as a computer, a tablet, or a smartphone. The SightStreamer 2 is an FM receiver that, well, it streams. It's kind of in the name. And before you all start commenting and saying, well, yeah, you could build a Raspberry Pi with an SDR. Sure, fine, okay, you could. But most people don't have the time to develop, build, deploy, and maintain a custom project like that. You might. I know I don't. So most broadcast engineers these days don't either. And this is where Innovonix comes in and provides the solution. The SightStreamer 2 can monitor not just the off-air audio from the tuner, but you can also connect your program audio that comes from the studio, so you can quickly diagnose problems without having to travel to the site. And it can alarm you if things go awry with your signal. Email notifications and SNMP can quickly let you know when you have low RF, low audio, loss of stereo pilot, or RDS problems. Now, I mentioned that it is an FM tuner that streams. This unit connects to your local network and has a web interface that provides you with a whole smorgasbord of information about your station. And we'll get to that in a moment, but the main feature is the streaming. It uses AAC HEV2. I know, a lot of words and letters and things, but it is a format for streaming. And that gives you a low bitrate but high quality audio stream to allow you to hear how the station sounds from virtually anywhere you have internet access. So let's take a look at the outside of the box. The unit is about a third of a standard 19 inch rack space wide, which allows you to mount three of them in a single RU. There's a shelf that you can get from Innovonix that allows you to mount three of them together to save space, because we all know that sometimes space is at a premium at some transmitter sites. On the front, we have the display that allows you local control and configuration, a knob that allows you to control the screen, and an eighth inch headphone connector. On the back is an F connector for the antenna, the two XLR inputs for the program audio, a LAN port and power. Now, a quick note about the power is that you can chain multiple units together to save on cabling and power strip space. So if you have three of them on a shelf, you only have to plug one into the power strip and then the other two just get chained off of the first one. So once you get your IP address configured and your receiver connected to audio and network, that is where the real fun begins with the Site Streamer 2. So let's jump in, let me go plug this in, let's jump into the computer here and we'll look at the web interface real quick. Okay, we jumped into the web interface here. We can see some information right off the bat about the station. Obviously our frequency and some RBDS data, some signal strength, stereo pilot, alarms, etc., etc., etc. To listen to the station, Really simple. All you have to do is come up here to the corner and click the little speaker icon to the top right, and the sure. audio will start to stream Trump's to your web browser. Affect the price. 
No doubt that's on people's minds as the Colorado Auto Show opens. If you have multiple stations that you need to monitor, you can click the preset button where it says right here, right now it says not a preset. But if you click the preset button, you can select another station. The audio will start streaming from that. And ta-da, there you go. Now we're looking at another station. If you had program audio connected to the site streamer too, you can click the link, the little button that's right here that says radio. We're gonna click on that and click, it says aux. Now it's gonna be listening to the back of the site streamer. So that'll be your program audio that you're feeding in to help monitor. Obviously I have nothing plugged into the back of the site streamer right now. So there is no audio to monitor. Let's go back to radio because that's a lot more fun. Now let's look at some of the other options here. If you click into the graphs and metering, you can see meters for the left and right audio, the left plus right, and the left minus right. If the station doesn't transmit in stereo, then you'll get nothing on the left minus right meter. And I will show that here right now. This station does transmit in stereo, but let's try this station. Look, there's no audio in the left minus right because it's transmitting in mono. This one's more fun. If you have program audio plugged into the site streamer, there it is right there. You'll have meters for that. I don't have anything plugged in, so that's why there's no meters bouncing. Down below is a really neat feature that I think is one of the cooler things of this box. It's called the band scanner. And this shows you all the stations that the Sight Streamer 2 can hear. Let me, uh, let me get this started because it'll take it a few moments to scan. So if you want to see everything that's in your market, click the scan button. Everything that you can see, or well, right here, everything I can see from my apartment, it'll give me a graphical representation and a list of stations. And we can choose to select the scan either by a signal strength or by signal strength and RDS. So it just kind of gives you a little bit more options. And it's almost done here. So let's wait a moment and we will see what we can see from this apartment. Boom, there we go. Again, like I said, it's a nice graphical representation of all the stations that I can see from here. And it gives me a list of 20 stations that I can see from here as well. I had mentioned earlier that the Sight Streamer 2 can send alarms to you should something not be right with your station. So let's click the alarms link on the left side and you'll be able to set some configurations for alarms. We can turn alarms on and off for each individual section, like radio audio loss, etc., etc. But in here, you can set where your threshold is for the audio. So that's when it'll alarm, when the audio gets below that, when the audio will uh, to reset the alarm, when your audio recovers, how long it has to be in that alarm state to actually fire the alarm, and then how long it has to be recovered in order to recover from the alarm. And again, the same thing can be done with your program or aux audio, and you can configure your RF signal strength, your stereo pilot, your RDS alarms, and well, hang on, RDS alarms. There is something that is really cool with that. You can check if the RDS data has not been updated for a while. In this case, on this one, five minutes. If I were to turn this on, I would get an alarm if the radio, the RDS radio text didn't update for five minutes. So if, you know, say your RDS software is not working right, it crashes. This will give you an alarm saying, hey, you're not putting out RDS data. So it'll help you troubleshoot that issue. And if you're in front of the actual unit, the display will flash, giving you a visual alarm. There is one thing that I do wanna draw your attention to in the setup page, because again, this is a streaming box, and that is the ability to push an audio stream out of the site streamer too. 
here it is on that lower section here under stream. That stream could go to an audio logger back at your studio or in a last resort option out to your internet stream host. Now your mileage may vary on that and that is not something that I would recommend at all. But in an emergency, pretty much everything is fair game to stay on the air. That is the Innovonic 645 Sight Streamer 2 in a nutshell. I've used their tuners for many years in my previous job and I've never had any issues. They just work. If you want more information about the Innovonic 645 Sight Streamer 2, I've got a link in the description below. Thank you to Innovonic so much for sponsoring this video and for loaning me this unit. And while you're still here, don't go anywhere yet, I have other content on my channel, like transmitter site tours, studio tours, and videos that teach some of the basics of broadcast engineering. Well, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning.